for us to have the abundant life. It is not God's will for us to be languishing in poverty and sickness and disease and, and bad family lives and, and can't sleep at night, can't rest, and always in a tizzy. That's not God's will for your life. God wants you to be able to use your faith to conquer whatever comes against you. And I will quick to tell you that I've been at this for a long time, and, and I know what works and I know what doesn't work. And I can tell you for sure that from sheer observation and listening to what comes out of people's mouth and, and observing how they live, many people, even in the church community, they think that other people are their problem. And I want to just, just drill this into your heart today. People are not your problem. And they are not your answer. They're not in charge. Nobody is in charge of the kingdom of God. You don't have to go through no pope, no apostle, no bishop, no board, no individuals to get to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is available to every human being on this planet. And the problem is that Satan is always trying to show you that people are trying to fight you, they're trying to hurt you, they're preventing you, they're after you, and sometimes they have the devil have you turning on people and and, and making statements they got against people and and building up walls to prevent people from going forward and and fighting people to your own defeat. Whatever you are thinking about people, whatever you are saying to and about people. And whatever you are doing to people, same thing to you. <laughs> that's, that's just the way it is, brother. You listen, listen. Be, listen, God, God's not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So I pray because I, I've observed in the church community and in, in the world at large, people are fighting people and, and, and they're going down and they're getting sickly and they're dying and, and they're getting all kind of trouble because of having the wrong spirit towards people. Listen, folks, there are two kinds of people who walk this planet. Number one, the people who have faith in God. And number two, the people who do not have faith in God. And that, that's just the way it is. And when you don't have faith in God, you will act ugly and you'll think ugly and, and you'll, you'll do ugly and, and ugly will come on your life. But those of us who are operating in the law of faith, in the law of hope, and in the law of love, everything is going to turn out fine in our lives. And I want to urge you to know that today. No matter who you are today, may I tell you, that by faith, everything is going to work out fine if you learn how to walk by faith. Now, let me read the scripture that I've been reading to our members, in, and, and I want to share this with you. It's, it's a very well-known scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse number 13, and the Bible says, And now about it, faith, hope, charity, these are three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, faith is great, hope is great, but love is greater. Did you catch that today? They all three are great. And, and in dealing with God, trust me, you, can, you cannot think outside the law of faith, the law of hope, and the law of love. If you want to deal with God successfully, you must become skillful in utilizing the law of faith. You must become skillful in utilizing the spirit of hope and then, of course, walking in love. I dubbed myself the love apostle. I love everybody, and I don't blame anybody for what bad things come to me. When bad things come to me, either God is allowing me to be tested or it is something that the devil is doing and in most cases, I'm sorry to say this, but in most cases, it's something that I've sown. And, and when I sow something bad, something bad's got to come to me and i got to pay the, price, the penalty for it. But, but for the most part, for the most part, I want to encourage you today to know that if you walk by faith, 
and, and understand that by faith, all things are possible to them that believe. You got to hear this today. The Bible says these words, the just shall live by faith. In other words, your life must be governed by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then verse 6 in Hebrews 11 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I love that part. Those who diligently, those who are faithful and dedicated to seeking God, and he will reward you. And, and you needn't be, again, jealous of other people and the positions that they hold of the money they got. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. They're just people. They're just people. The most important thing in this life is, is for you to be able to walk in faith, to walk in hope, and to walk in the love of God, and to understand that the reason why God wants you to walk in those three principles is so that he can bless you. He wants you to have plenty of money. He wants you to have enough money. He wants you to be healthy in your body. He wants you to be healthy in your emotions. He wants you to have healthy relationships. He doesn't want you running around here angry and bitter and unforgiving and trying to hurt people. Do you not know you're going to go down doing that? And like I say, I've been full-time in ministry since 1972, and I've seen the, the great ones and the small ones and the ones who thought they had it going on. And I've watched them go up and I've watched them flame out. Because somehow they didn't get the memo in the scriptures. It's not about you. It isn't about me. It's about Christ Jesus the Lord. Now let me just try, stop for a moment. Because I, I got something you need to hear. I led a man to the Lord the other day. I had to go and get my blood work for, for my annual checkup. You know, the blood and whatever there. And, and I noticed this young man. Uh, he, he was a security guard sitting there. And, and uh, when I finished, I said, I hope he's still there. When I finished, he was still there. So I, 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 God has just anointed me to approach people to, to, to open them up. And so I walked up to him with a serious look on my face. And I said, tell me something, young man. How can an old man get in on this easy money you're making? And, of course, he started laughing. He said, he said, it took me a while to get in on it. I said, that's wonderful that you have this job. I said, do you like it? Oh, yeah, I like it, yada, yada. He said, normally I'm not here. And that let me know it was a setup. He said, Norman, I'm not here. I'm in another location, but I'm here today. I said, by the way, I said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor of a church over here in the Compton area, and I have a question that I ask young people, and only one out of ten know the answer. And by that time, I pause because I'm going to create interest in him. Now, he's wanting to know, what question is it? So I says to him, listen, if you should die tonight, and you get to heaven's gate, and you knock on the door, and Jesus comes to the door. Now, we know this is not biblical. And then, then don't, don't take me to that. You theologian know, I know this is not biblical. But I'm doing this to paint a picture in his mind, you see. And I say, knock on the door. And Jesus comes to the door, and he said, well, why should I let you in heaven and not send you to hellfire? He said, well, I'm a nice guy, and I try to do good things. I said, ah, wrong He said, that's the wrong answer? I say, it certainly is the wrong answer. And by the way, I'm sorry to say this, his daddy was a pastor. And he says, is that the wrong answer? I said, that's absolutely the wrong answer. And so I began to tell him how he became a sinner. I told him about the perfect, pristine environment that Adam and Eve were in. And I told him that Adam disobeyed God. And I said to him, you became a sinner because of what Adam did. And I said, but God had a plan. I began to talk to him about John 3.16 and about Ephesians 2.8 and 9. I began to preach the gospel to him. Glory to God. And I said, now you believe all of that. He said, I do. And I didn't ask him, did he want to be saved? Don't go around there asking people, do they want to become a Christian? Never do that. It's not a request. It's a demand. 
God, he commands you to be saved. So you command the people. I said, give me your hand. And he obeyed me. And I put the gospel in him. And he repented and accepted Christ and his Savior. I love it. Now, this year, it is my goal to win at an average of one soul a day. One a day. <laughs> Praise God, brother. And, and it's exciting. And, and, and because of the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost and the veracity of the word of God, somebody is going to accept Christ as saved. That's my, that's my faith talk. In other words, by, by faith, listen, listen, by faith, I'm going to come in contact with somebody whom God has already uh, prepared to be saved. He did say the harvest is plenteous, and he did say the labor is a few. So, so they're out there, and, and by faith, by faith, I preach the gospel. A lot of people in the church of Jesus Christ, they don't preach the gospel because they don't believe it. They don't believe it. See, the gospel has three phases. The gospel, believe it, benefit from it, and then broadcast it. You understand that? A, a lot of people don't believe it, and they are not benefiting. Now, you got folks who got money, and they got fame, and they're important, and all, but inside, they don't have a good life, you see. Behind the scenes, they're living a bad life because the only thing that can set you free from sin is when you believe the gospel. That's good news right there. He was wounded for our transgressions. He, he, he suffered, and, he, and I talk about he, Jesus, suffered, and Jesus Christ uh, died on that cross. They whipped him. They, they pulled the flesh from his bones, and he was marred like no other man. They spit in his face, pulled out his beard, and they beat him and beat him and beat him. Then they nailed Jesus to that cross, and he never said a mumbling word. And then God the Father so loved sinners until he put the wrath that he had for sinners on his own son, Jesus. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. And he was dead for three days. And on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead. And whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So I tell you today, brothers and sisters, a lot of people go to church today in America who simply don't believe the gospel and because they don't believe the gospel, they cannot take advantage of kingdom principles, which are, listen, kingdom principles, which are the law of faith, the law of hope, and the law of love. I'll tell you right now, you cannot be skillful in, in employing these three principles and stay in bondage. It's impossible. It is impossible to walk by faith and to walk in hope and to walk in love, and to walk in bondage at the same time. You can't stay broke. You can't stay bound. You can't stay in the background. Whatever, whatever God has for you, if you walk by faith and walk in hope, walk in love, it's going to come to you. The devil and his people cannot prevent you from receiving what God has for you. And again, in the church community, we got all these people, some standing behind pulpits, who don't believe the gospel. And, and you can tell they don't believe the gospel because they don't magnify the gospel. In their messages, the gospel gets mentioned, but the gospel isn't preached. You see, you haven't really preached until you preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. You're just talking, brother, until you preach the death and the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, until you preach to that, that the gospel is the message that God himself sent to redeem sinners from their sins. Now you, that's the only way you can be born again. You can't be born again because you're nice and because you third and fourth generation denominationalism. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. The question is, have you been convicted? And if you were convicted, did you repent? And did you accept Christ as Savior? If you did, then bless his sweet name, Jesus. You, brother, you, sister, are a new creature in Christ. And now you got to learn how to walk it out. you got to learn how to take advantage of what God has done for you. And uh, because, because, friends, that, that's where it's at, you see. That's where it's at. And I, and I need to t say to you that. That the Bible says, 
Uh, but why? But but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of them that seek Him. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, today, that you you have to understand that uh, you are a spiritual being. Everybody is involved with the the spiritual world. Sinners involved with it. Now a lot of people don't realize this, but everybody on the planet is involved in the spiritual world. Some people are dead in it, but they are involved in the spiritual world. Note here uh, what the wise man David said in Psalms, the 19th division, verse number 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So David knew that God was observing him. How many of you today know that God is observing you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Everything is open to God. There's a light shining in on your spirit, man. God knows everything you are thinking. God knows your motives. He knows your attitude. He, he knows everything about you because your spirit, you can't cover. You can't prevent God from knowing. And so this is the reason why. You, you have to know that God, is, he, he monitors you. Now, I learned this, and I didn't, listen, I didn't know I knew it. I learned this in 1970s. When I quit my job to go full-time in ministry, I was out on God. I had to trust God for every meal, for a place to lay my head, for my wife and my new baby. I had to trust him for everything. And the old people gave me a scripture, and here it is right here. I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because you're trusting in me. And so I said, nah, I don't have any money. I, I'm not related to a bishop. My mother's not a missionary. People are talking about me, laughing at me, and, and, and saying all kind of evil about me as if I was trying to hurt somebody. And there I was just trying to survive, trying to survive. But God said to me, he said, listen, you keep your mind on me and watch what you are thinking about people Watch what you are speaking about people and make sure that you are not in a mode of self-promotion and make sure you aren't jealous and envious of the success of others and watch out for that sex demon and watch out for the demon of anger and bitterness, the demons that used to have control over you. The demons that had control over me in my past, God says, watch them because they're still lurking around and they want to enter back into you and totally corrupt you. Watch and pray that you are not into temptation. The spirit in it indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I got into watching mode and, and my, my prayer of preference was this prayer right here. God have your way in my soul, in my spirit, and in my body. Father God, in the name of Jesus, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me with your word and fill me afresh with the Holy Ghost. I pray that continuously and have your way, God, have your way. And back then, I didn't know I could say this quietly. Everywhere I went, I would say, have your way, God, have your People thought I lost my mind. Because I, I needed I needed ninety dollars a month rent. I did I, my rent was ninety dollars back in seventy two, seventy three, and I needed it. I had no check coming in, bro. I had to cry day and night, night and day. But I learned something. I learned that walking by faith has much to do with faithfulness. And, and, and see, if you be faithful to God, then God will be faithful to you. See, a lot of you in the church are all trying to believe God for something when you should show God that you're faithful to him first. Note here, if you don't have faith in God, you will not be faithful to God. See, a lot of people aren't faithful to God because they don't have faith in God. Learn to be faithful to the things of God before you start trying to believe God for the house, for the car, for the job, for the spouse, or for some great ministry. 
Let God observe your being faithful to the basic thing. Because as you be faithful over a few things, be faithful over a few things, he'll make you rule over many. No, faithfulness to the word of God is the only way to prove we have faith in God. So I, I want to say this to somebody, uh, some pastor, some minister, young person, a uh, young person, you, you want your ministry to grow. You want to get something done in God. Learn to be faithful in the small things. Just be faithful. I was talking to a friend of, the, of 35, 40 years ago uh, today, and he was laughing at me. He said, oh, you used to be in everything. You was always there. Oh, yes. And, and then I started doing things for people in, in the ministry who I knew didn't respect me. I knew that they had negative things to say about me, but I, and I was still faithful. I still was faithful because it wasn't about them. It was about me and God. It was about me and God. And I found out that you can't be faithful to God without being mistreated by the Pharisees uh, and, and the scribes. And get this, when they mistreat you, if you retaliate, then the door shuts on your blessing. Let me find out how man is treating the people who he know don't like him, and I can tell you whether he's going to get blessed or not. See, a lot of people in the church community, they're not going to be blessed because they don't treat their enemies right. you got to learn how to treat your enemies. you got to, by faith, treat your enemies the way the Bible told you to. I hear this well today. Many people in the ministry are not getting anywhere because they have an adversarial spirit towards leaders and towards other people who are fighting them. When you find out that somebody is fighting you, put them at the top of your prayer list and pray in tongues over their names. Amen to God. Ask God to help them because they're just ignorant. That they're just, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know who they're fooling with. And if they mess around and fool with somebody who's really walking with God, they're going to get in trouble. Because God has already said it's going to happen about that. So I'm not going to get into that too much. But, but note it now. To be faithful is to be, to, to be faithful is to be faithful. If you're full of faith, then you'll be faithful. People who are not faithful, they're not full of faith. If you're full of faith, just be faithful. And, 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 and the last thing is this, listen. Be faithful in getting into the Word of God. Be faithful to read, study, memorize, and meditate in the Word of God. Be faithful. Be faithful in prayer. Why? The Bible says these words. Let the Word of God dwell in you richly. That's what he meant. Get into it. And then the Bible says, man ought always to pray and not to faint. You don't need nobody to keep preaching to you about praying. The Word says it. In fact, prayer is so important that God said, listen, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Therefore, for years, I've had a prayer life. I have one today. I have a time of getting into the Word. Why? Because God said so. And as we come to the close of this, listen to this. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Memorize the Bible. Meditate in it. Do prayer, add fasting to it, and also be faithful in church attendance. Be faithful if you can. There was a time that, that, that every time the church door opened, I was there. I used to love when convocation time would come because I'd be in the day sessions and the night sessions and, and everything was going on. I was just sitting there just watching, looking. Nobody knew my name or kin to nobody. Didn't have nobody to represent me. Didn't have nobody to, prom to promote me. I was just in the day. I tell people I'm in the B group. I'll be here when you're here, and I'll be here when you're not here. I was faithful. I didn't have no position. Nobody called my name, nothing. I was just faithful. I was faithful, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing it because the Holy Ghost had led me. And God began, began to minister to me. And he says these words to me. If you be faithful to God, God's going to be faithful to you. And, and hear this well today. If you be faithful in small things, some of you, your big problem, you don't go to church enough, you don't pray enough, you don't, you don't, you don't get into the Word enough, and then have the audacity to get an attitude when you don't get blessed. God is a faith God. So be faithful to God, and God will be faithful to you. You cannot out-faith for God. And he's looking for somebody to be faithful. 
You, you don't go, some of, as I first stated, some of you are negligent in church attendance. You're negligent in paying your tithe and giving offerings. You, you're negligent. And, 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 and now you're going to have, try to believe God to heal you for cancer. You're going to believe God to heal you for cancer. And you, and you can't believe God enough to be faithful in church attendance. Stop it. Before you get sick, before the next problem comes to you, be faithful to God. And God will be faithful to you according to your faith. Be it I see my talent. I love you today. And listen, friends, if this ministry is blessing anybody, I need you to stand with me with your financial gifts and your prayers. The number's going to be on the screen. And then I want you to please, sir, please, ma'am, stand with us. And if you do it by faith, God will honor faith. Faith honors God and God honors faith. It is impossible to walk by faith and fail to be blessed to God. I see my time is on the God. Father, I pray for everybody's viewing today. I pray that they'll get full of faith, that they'll be full of hope and full of love. And I pray you communicate to them that they cannot be bound, can't stay broke, can't stay sick, and they're going to come out just fine. Mm -hmm. Next time.